What's up everybody, Liam Clisham here for another Redshift quick tip. Just real quickly, I wanna shout out to Teddy Gage for helping me kinda of walk through this comping background issue. Um, I was working on a client project and they needed a background pass and I just couldn't figure it out. I, I spent like three to four hours trying to figure it out and I finally nailed it and I figured if I'm spending that much time, there's probably others that are spending that much time. And I searched the forms and there wasn't really anything there. So here we are. All right, so let me turn on this dome light so I can get my scene going again. And all I've got is just like the free kit bash thing set up. Just a quick example, um, an HDRI plugged into the dome light. And there we go, get back to my view. All right, so let's play out this scenario. I had this client, we had some foreground images, but they needed to adjust this back plate here. And I went through all the steps that seemed to make sense. So I went to my AOV manager, which is right here, or you can go to the Redshift menu and pull it from right here. And I added a background, thinking that this dome light has background enabled right here. So that's a background and that should work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this down to background and there's nothing there. So I'll hit bucket render, see if that does it. Cause sometimes you have to have bucket render enabled. Um, I don't know when the update was, but uh, most of the time you can actually get a progressive preview now for AOVs. But I figured I'd try with this. You can see nothing's happening. So I did, I did some digging and I found out that in order to get a background AOV, you actually have to use a Redshift environment material. So to set that up, that's in your render settings. If you come down here in the basic tab under environment, you'll see re environment material. Pretty easy to create, just go to Redshift materials, environment. I'm gonna turn off this backplate and grab this HDRI out of it. Come in here, plug that in, and Whoop, I don't want it under backplate, I want it under general. Just wait for this to catch up for a second. And cut that out of there. I want it in general. So we get the right thing. And I think everything else we can leave alone. Yep, so I'm gonna come back to my materials, put that in there, and let's see what happens. It's calculating everything, rendering. And you'll see in a second, one, the angle's gonna be a little bit different just because I have this rotated a little bit. No big deal, can always take care of that later. Now, unfortunately for my example, it's not really showing up here, um, but, I'm just looking. But in my experience, when I have used the environment, it has made things really, really dirty at times. And um, I think what ended up setting it off last time was doing just a quick little offset. I think I'm like negative 20. So I'll just wait for this to catch up. I might have to reload it. Yeah, I think environments you have to reload. So go ahead and quick reload on that. See if that triggers the dirtiness. If not, it's okay. You can take my word for it. <laughs> but I think, I think we're gonna end up with a clean image here. All right, that's all right. Regardless to say, I was having a lot of trouble getting a clean image using the environment. Um, that said, I was able to get a background pass like this. So that kind of solved it, but it was super dirty. So I tried to go back and reuse my dome light and tried doing custom AOVs and just couldn't get anything that actually worked. So let me turn this back on. So what the solution ended up being was that the background for your dome lights are actually an emissive pass. So if we go to your Redshift AOV settings, throw in an emission, take this background out of there, 
come down to here, you'll see we get that same background pass. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Unless you have other lights in the scene that are emissive. So I have these three area lights. Uh, they were spotlights, but I ended up just switching them to area lights. And if I turn on their visibility, that actually counts towards the emission here. So you see we're still in this emission pass and they're showing up here. So then what are you supposed to do to separate those out? And so here's the trick. If you are using Redshift 2.6, basically and above, we have light group passes. So what I'm gonna do here is throw all these spots into a group called spots. And then I'm gonna come in here and throw this one into a new one called background. And that will allow you in the Redshift AOV Manager to select additional passes that pull these out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit all and let this repopulate. If I go into background, you'll see everything is cut out, including the lights here. And then if I go into spots, everything's cut out except for the spots, allowing you to select those lights. So that's pretty much the workaround. If you're having trouble with your dome light and you try the environmental method and it's super dirty, go ahead and try this emission style. Um, it's worked really well for me for this project and it really kind of saves a lot of headaches. Um, just remember that if you do have other emissive materials or objects in the scene that you are going to have to use light groups. As always, you can find me on social media at 531 or email me liam at 531.com. Pretty much everywhere at 531. And thanks for all your support throughout the last couple of years. I know it's been a while since I've made a cool Redshift quick tip, but there's still a lot of you supporting me. So thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.